I'm sorry, I, I don't think we've met. Oh, you lying bitch. To call it unexpected would be an understatement. This post contains spoilers about the plot of Behind Her Eyes. I'm making an effort, David. At first glance, Behind Her Eyes is a painstakingly slow-burning psychological thriller about adultery, substance abuse, toxic relationships, and living in the UK which is seemingly enough weighty content to carry the mini-series through its six episodes. Hey, for you! About doing to her what someone else did to me. Adele! Adele has done nothing wrong! But the new Netflix show, based on the book by Sarah Pinborough, is much more than meets the her. I, delving unabashedly and confusingly into subplots about lucid dreaming, astral projection, witchcraft, arson, and murder. The abrupt left turn into the show's final two episodes left many viewers wondering, what did I just watch? The show begins innocuously enough with Louise, Simona Brown, a single mom, or mum, for the Brits, living her quiet life save for her night terrors with her son. She runs into David, Tom Bateman, at a bar, strikes up a flirtation, and later discovers he's her new boss. Louise's life further gets turned upside when David's wife Adele, Eve Hewson, enters the picture. Oh. The plot continues to circle around the three main characters, teasing something insidious underneath. That insidiousness comes at the hands of Adele's friend Rob, Robert Arameo, who, it turns out, has been grifting his way through life via some Freaky Friday-inspired body-switching antics. It's almost impressive in its shockingness and ability to wildly unmoor itself from the earlier episodes and give viewers zero time to process the conclusion. So let's unpack the ending now. I could ask you the same thing. Uh, well. What happens at the end of Behind Her Eyes? Before we dig into the astral projection of it all, let's review Adele's backstory. You're shocking both of them. <laughs> Adele is a Scottish heiress whose extremely wealthy family owns estates and grounds. When she was a teenager, a fire broke out that killed her sleeping parents, but David, the son of a farmer that worked for her family, saved her from the flames, David sustained bad burns to his arm. The cause of the fire is unclear, and despite some red herrings that suggested in earlier episodes that David or Adele had something to do with it, it seems it was just your run of the mill deadly fire. <laughs> I told you to stop. Did you tell what that was all about? It's about the house. At one point, Adele also shares that one of her relatives was a practicing witch, which is one of the few hints about the ending. What do you want? Huh? What's on? Don't give me orders. I like that jacket. Fuck off! After her parents' death, Adele is sent to Westland's rehab to cope with the grief. It's there she meets Rob, a recovering addict who is estranged from his working-class family. Rob and Adele become close friends, and it's hinted that Rob is in love with Adele, or at least very suspicious of David's intentions with her. I know you don't want to go home. We see Rob keeps a red journal where he details his feelings about Adele, and also his problems overcoming heroin use. The two also bond over their night terrors Adele has been able to train herself to lucid dream to deal with it, and she begins teaching Rob how to master his dreams. Enter the astral projection. Please, Adele. Please, Adele. Adele has gotten so good at controlling her dreams that she discovers she can astral project her soul to other places. After both Adele and Rob leave rehab, Adele shares this power with Rob, who is immediately able to mimic it. Rob, who has become enamored with Adele's life and home and with David, then makes a remarkably hasty decision to trick Adele into switching bodies with him via astral projection. I need to try this one thing with him. And I said yes. He then kills his own body, with Adele's soul in it, by giving it a fatal dose of heroin. He, in Adele's body, dumps his own body down a well, for good measure he tosses in David's watch, to plant evidence against him, in case David discovers the soul-swapping scheme. And then he was... You think he overdosed on purpose? Rob Adele then convinces David to forget about Rob's death and run away together. But David is always strangely suspicious of his wife and her strange new personality. Rob Adele continues to spy on David, emotionally and psychologically torturing other women who try to get close to him or offer him relationship advice. David. This is 
wrong. So how does Louise fit into all of this? Ah uh, yes, back to Louise. Poor sweet Louise gets tangled up in the Rob Adele David love triangle when she begins sleeping with David, whom she is attracted to, but also slightly suspects may be hurting his wife. That's because Rob Adele has been astral spying on Louise and then also befriending her and turning Louise against David. Louise feels pity for Rob Adele and they go to the gym together a lot. Perfectionist. And he tends to overdo it at work. Eventually, Rob Adele teaches Louise how to lucid dream because she also deals with night terrors. Louise then discovers that Rob Adele can astral project leading her to conclude Rob Adele is bad news. Louise tries to help David flee from Rob Adele's clutches, but before he can, Rob Adele tricks Louise into coming to her home by pretending she is committing suicide. Rob Adele then sets fire to her own home. Louise comes to Rob Adele's home only to realize she can't break in to help, she decides to try astral projecting inside to save Rob Adele. Rob Adele seizes this opportunity to switch bodies with Louise, becoming Rob Louise. Rob Louise then actually overdoses Adele's body so that Adele Louise dies. Rob Louise then pulls Adele's body from the burning home so that she looks like a hero who tried but failed to save her friend. <laughs> and what about that last scene? Rob Louise goes to find David, who now believes his wife has died by suicide fire. David's conscience is finally clear after telling the cops about Rob's body on the grounds of his now dead wife's estate. Rob Louise and David get married. But Louise's seven-year-old son Adam senses that something is up with his mom, who doesn't seem nearly as caring, kind, or attentive as his real mom, also his mom hates boats. You've always said you hate boats. Maybe I've changed. How does astral projection work? The minutiae isn't really explained, but the important part is that you can only project yourself to places you have been before. You must be able to vividly imagine the details of the space. Also, visualizing doors helps. Why doesn't Rob just switch bodies with David so he can have the money and not keep up a ruse? Rob seems to genuinely love be obsessed with David, as witnessed by the one time he met him, and realized David was a beautiful, sweet and totally unperceptive man. David also doesn't seem to have an issue with night terrors, which is apparently a prerequisite for lucid dreaming and astral projection. Please, Adele. Please, sir. Adele. No, my dear. Shh. 